I'm Junichi Masuda from Game Freak. I'm head of development, but I was producer on Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I was also the director for the original Ruby and Sapphire games, and I also created a lot of the music for the games. I'm Shigeru Omari, director on Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Twelve years ago, when I first entered Game Freak, the original Ruby and Sapphire were my first project. I was a game system planner as well as worked on a lot of communication features in the games. What was it like updating the game for a new generation as well as those who were fans of the original game? So yeah, of course being my first project at Game Freak, the original Ruby and Sapphire was a very memorable project for me. And I really realized that there are huge fans of the original games and they really like them. So it was a lot of pressure to live up to those expectations, and of course we need to be faithful to the original games. But at the same time we need to go back and change things and freshen things up to make sure there are new surprises for all players enjoying the games. What is the process for working new features into a game that already exists? such as a new area nav, dex nav, and buzz nav. So it really just comes back to understanding the original philosophy or concept behind the original Ruby and Sapphire, and then taking that same core concept, and then coming up with ways to express it using the modern hardware. So obviously with the graphics for example, we went with 2D in the original game, and we're now updating those to 3D. Really understanding what the thinking behind the original games and translating that into 3D was one of the ways we did that. And also for example, you were talking about the different navs that are in the game now. So in the original Ruby and Sapphire, there was this device called Poke Gear that was on a separate screen. But the core idea behind it was to offer a lot of supportive information for the player's adventure, so now that we have a second screen on the 3DS, we can add a lot of things to it. We added a variety of different support devices like the Buzz Nav that offers a lot of information of what other players are up to, and the Dex Nav which will give you a lot of supportive information about the Pokemon in the surrounding area. So it's really just taking the idea of a support device and seeing what we can do with the current technology. So to go back to the theme of the original Ruby and Sapphire games, the region is actually based on my grandparents homeland which was the island of Kyushu in Japan. And with the name of the Hoenn region, it actually comes from two different characters that were used in Japanese. HO would represent this idea of richness or abundance in nature, or the relationships between people for example. And ENN is actually representing bonds between people, rich or abundant bonds between people with nature for example. So that really comes from my experience with visiting my grandparents when I was younger catching bugs in the forest, or going and playing in the rivers, or catching fish in the ocean. And just really have these great people that are really friendly and enjoying nature. So I really wanted to convey that concept in the original Ruby and Sapphire, and that concept of rich and abundant bonds became one of the themes. But we have an additional theme for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire that's a little different. In Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, we wanted to explore that concept of abundance and richness and take it even further. So in thinking about that, I went with something that kind of exemplifies this kind of richness and bond between people, and really came upon a concept like coexistence. Like how Pokemon coexist with humans and nature, and everyone just kind of coexists within the same space, living at the same time, and kind of express that obviously in the story. There's a lot of different story elements that express that, but also in the gameplay for example. We have the two screens that expresses that coexistence. You're playing a game on the top screen, and on the bottom screen you have this constant support of information to assist you. So X and Y kind of exist within this same space as Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. The two games are compatible, they really coexist, allowing you to trade and battle with players of X and Y. And if you have a game from both of the series, you'll be able to collect all of the Pokemon and complete the National Pokedex. We really wanted to focus on this idea of coexistence. What's it like updating an older Pokemon game using mechanics from a newer game in the series? So because this is a follow up to X and Y coming immediately after X and Y, we wanted to make sure all the players who started Pokemon with X and Y would be able to easily get into these games, wouldn't be intimidated and would be able to enjoy them really easily. At the same time of course we have all the fans of the original Ruby and Sapphire who might be coming back to the Pokemon games for the first time in a long time. So we really wanted to focus on both of these audiences and make sure they both can really enjoy it. One of the ways we did that is that we have the original story of Ruby and Sapphire, but we've kind of expanded on that by kind of tying it together with X and Y by continuing its mega evolution story. So one of the big new additions to the story is now you're exploring the mystery of the origin of the mega evolution, and that's centered around the new mega Rayquaza Pokemon that appears in the games. When making a new game, how do you decide which Pokemon are going to Mega Evolve, and why did you decide to make Rayquaza a focus of this new game? So the reason for making Mega Rayquaza a focus of the story is, it kind of goes back to Groudon and Kyogre. 
Of course, back in Ruby and Sapphire with the third enhanced version of the games, Rayquaza was on the package for that and was a central character to it. So with Groudon and Kyogre this time, these legendary Pokemon actually have primal reversions, which is a different kind of evolution. Then you can do the Mega Evolution. In terms of how that's explained in the story, Groudon and Kyogre were around since these really ancient times, and a long time ago they used to be much larger and much more powerful. Nature was flowing with this wild energy that caused them to be much stronger, but now as time has progressed, that energy has faded and they've become their current form. But with this primal reversion, they can kind of regain that power temporarily and revert to their old forms. With that part of the story, I wanted to show how it contrasts with Mega Evolutions, and Mega Rayquaza seemed like an appropriate Pokemon to show that contrast. In terms of how we determine which Pokemon get a Mega Evolution, of course Mega Evolutions were introduced with X and Y, and we're adding a lot more this time around, and we've been monitoring how people have been playing the game what Pokemon they're using at tournaments, and even the online raiding battles. So seeing which Pokemon are prominently used a lot, we'll come up with ways just to improve the balance and shake things up. For example, we come up with Mega Evolutions that can counter these Pokemon to improve the battle experience. And that's one of the reasons we choose Mega Evolutions. Other than that, some of the game designers at Game Freak really want to work on certain Pokemon. So they'll of course choose some, or from a story perspective, which Pokemon will make sense. So we'll choose some that way as well. We'll also take into consideration fan favorites, which Pokemon fans would be excited to see Mega Evolve. It's really a mixture of methods in how we choose which Pokemon have Mega Evolutions. How has the Super Secret Base feature been updated to take advantage of the 3DS's unique features? So yeah, it kind of goes back to the coexistence theme. The original Ruby and Sapphire had secret bases that you could share with other players by using link cables, so you had to physically be in the same space as them, obviously. But with 3DS, we've really gone back to the communication features of the secret bases and updated them to take advantage of Street Pass. So if you're nearby people in the same vicinity, you'll be able to share secret bases with them. But you can also connect to the internet and share your secret base or visit other people's secret bases online. We even added a feature where you can generate a QR code so you can post it to social media and have people come check out your secret base, in which you can really customize it, like make your own gym. One of the cool things in the game is that you can have other people come and join your secret base and you can place them and set it up like a gym. Then you can go to other places and challenge their secret base and really it just comes back to trying to make it feel like you're playing with other people in the same kind of game world. With the new support features like the Dex Nav, a purposeful design choice to make the game easier for those new to the series? So obviously a big part of Pokemon is catching a lot of Pokemon and completing the Pokedex. And we think that random encounters and the excitement of not knowing what Pokemon you'll encounter is important to the gameplay. So really when considering both of those, we wanted to make it so players can more easily engage with the Pokedex completion part while also keeping the randomness of random encounters. So we now give a lot more information on the bottom screen, giving them a visual representation of what Pokemon are there, but also keeping random encounters at the same time. I think giving players more information and empowering them like this gives them more incentive to really go and catch all of the Pokemon. So I think it's just a little easier to get into the catching aspect of the game. What do you consider to be the biggest improvement in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire? So one of the biggest new additions really comes from the idea that now that the game is in full 3D, wouldn't it be cool to freely fly around the skies of their region, because we can render the entire thing in 3D. So we came up with the idea to let players use this new ability with either Mega Latios or Mega Latias, called Soar. And what this allows you to do is go into the skies of the Hoenn region and you can freely fly around. You actually have full control over it and you can land wherever you like. And this opens up a lot of possibilities to land in places you can't normally walk or surf to. And in these new places you'll encounter a lot of new Pokemon not previously seen in the Hoenn region that you can catch. What this does for us is allows players who just have the 3DS games being X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire to complete the National Pokedex with just the two different series of games. With the original Ruby and Sapphire, two of the big themes were Land and Ocean, represented by Kyogre and Groudon. With these updates, we're now focusing on a third theme of the sky, so I think it'll be a lot of fun for players to explore the skies of Hoenn. I just want to say one other piece. So one thing we've really gone back and changed quite a bit from the original game were the contests that exist in the game. We've gone back and completely redone how the gameplay works. The original idea for those contests was to add a new type of gameplay outside of Pokemon battles, and we've gone back this time and gave it its own unique substory of characters. You're kind of competing with this idol to become the top idol, so it's kind of a new story compared to what it was before, and we've also added a lot of new things to the gameplay. 
You can use these visually impressive moves that only appear in contests. You can use Mega Evolutions, which obviously wasn't a part of the original. And as part of this contest, you'll encounter a very special Pikachu which can change into a variety of costumes. We're calling it Cosplay Pikachu. And of course, this Pikachu can do a lot of cool things in the contest, but you can also use those costumes outside of battle, so changing into a costume allows Pikachu to learn some unique moves that he normally can't. And you can freely change those costumes as you like. So, for example, if you're going to a gym that is weak to a particular type, you can change into a costume and use Pikachu there, then switch out to a different costume later. How do you decide which Pokemon games to update and when, and what appealed to you about Ruby and Sapphire personally and being able to bring it to the 3DS? So it's really different every time we decide which ones to remake, especially the timing of when we would do that remake. I think with Ruby and Sapphire, speaking specifically to this update, a lot of people who enjoyed the original games were kids. Of course, they're older now, and I think they're really active on social media. And starting a few years ago, since I'm pretty active on Twitter, I would get constant non-stop tweets about when the Ruby and Sapphire remakes were coming. That really got me thinking about doing them. It really took until this time after doing X and Y and making games on the 3DS in full 3D that it felt like the right time. And then also the idea of tying it with X and Y both in compatibility and also the continuation of story. I thought Ruby and Sapphire would be a pretty good series to do that. I think a lot of fans were maybe kind of worried that the remakes of Ruby and Sapphire would never come since it had been a while, but I think we just found the perfect time to make some really cool games this time. Just as an aside, on November 21st of 2012, it was the 10th anniversary release in Japan, and I took Shigeru here out to drink, and at the time, he had no idea. But while we were drinking, I said, I said, hey, I want you to be the director for the remakes. And that's how the remake got started. Final question. What are your favorite Pokemon and why? So in terms of the new Pokemon that were introduced in X and Y, my current favorite is really Sylveon. The fairy type was first introduced in X and Y and Sylveon was the first fairy type we created internally. So when testing the game and going back to checking on the new features being added during development, I always had Sylveon in my team and as time went on it really just became my favorite Pokemon, my little companion. For Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, I really like how Primal Groudon turned out. I think it looks really cool and is my favorite Pokemon from these games. I also really like Torchic. So I kind of have two right now. From the most recent X and Y game, Inkay is one of my favorite Pokemon. So it actually came back to when we were thinking of how to use the gyroscope on the 3DS and one of the ideas I came up with was turning the 3DS upside down when the Pokemon was about to evolve, which would trigger the evolution. It really matched the design of Inke and was really memorable from the project when I was working on it. And for Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, so Deonsi was a Pokemon in X and Y, but when you bring it into the new game, it can actually Mega Evolve. And I remember we were having a tough time coming up with a design for that Pokemon. I can actually draw a little bit as an aside, so I helped the graphics design come up with a design for Mega Deonsi, so it's really memorable for me as well. <laughs> 